Hello out there everybody, Manny here at Area 503, and I hope you all have been well since our last video. Today I just want to talk with you all about the tragic passing of one of UFOlogy's top names. On May 13th, 2019, Stan Friedman passed away. In honor of Stan's lifetime of work in the field of ufology, I'd like to take this chance to review the life of this great man. My own conclusions after 53 years of study and investigation are that some so-called UFOs are intelligently controlled extraterrestrial spacecraft. Uh, the name Stanton Friedman has become synonymous with the term flying saucer. His unwavering point of view and determination for not only finding but also revealing the truth has made him iconic in the field of ufology. Stanton, or Stan as he prefers to be called, was born on July 29, 1934 in Elizabeth, New Jersey, next to his hometown of Linden, a working class town 18 miles southwest of New York City. His grandparents immigrated from Eastern Europe between 1900 and 1905. He attended Linden High School from 1947 to 1951 and was valedictorian of his class at age 16. It was during this time that Stan acquired some of the most important tools he would need for his life's work. I certainly didn't realize it at the time, but my high school career, four years at Linden High School in Linden, New Jersey, did prepare me for my activities as a UFO investigator, as a lecturer, as somebody defending truth and liberty and all that stuff. Uh, I was on the debate team my freshman, sophomore, and junior years. We won a state championship. And one thing about debating, you have to learn <laughs> to handle both sides of the argument because you never know which way you're going to go when the uh, tournaments come up. And uh, also, you have to get your facts straight. You can't make up things. It's sort of against the rules. During his senior year, there was no debate team, and Stan went into drama performing in two plays, perhaps a foreshadowing of his years on stage as a speaker. Now, if you told me that I'd wind up spending my life uh, lecturing about flying saucers, I'd have laughed my head off. He attended Rutgers University from 1951 to 1953 on a tuition scholarship and earned his expenses as a busboy during the summers in the Catskills. He obtained a scholarship to the University of Chicago where he attended from 1953 to 1956 and received his Bachelor's of Science degree in 1955 and then his Master's degree in Physics in 1956. He and the famous Carl Sagan were classmates during those years. In 1958, Stan was employed as a nuclear physicist for the General Electric Aircraft Nuclear Propulsion Department near Cincinnati, Ohio. Stan served 14 years in this role, and one day, while mail ordering books through a mail order bookhouse in New York, he needed one more book so that he would not have to pay shipping fees. And there was one, the report on unidentified flying objects by United States Air Force Captain Edward Ruppelt. This is how his fascination for the UFO phenomenon began. He went on to work for other companies such as General Motors, Westinghouse, TRW Systems, Aerojet General Nucleonic, and McDonnell Douglas where he worked on advanced classified programs on nuclear aircraft, fission, fusion rockets, and compact nuclear power plants for space applications. And then I stumbled across Project Blue Book Special Report Number 14 in about 1960 at the University of California Berkeley Library. And I was astonished because it hadn't been mentioned in any of the 15 books that I had read. And it not only provided me with tons of data, and I'm a data hound, I'll admit it, information on 3,200 sightings, 240 charts, tables, graphs, maps, data heaven. But it also had the press release that the Air Force issued, and that shocked me because it proved, once you looked at the data as I had been, that the Air Force was lying about the results of their study. And I was working on classified programs. I understand national security and how it works and so forth. But they were outright lying. That got my dander up. 
I later visited Project Blue Book many times, but that really began a 40-year well, quest now for the truth about flying saucers. I think I found it. Well, Stan, I think you found it as well. Well done, my friend, and rest well knowing that your legend lives on. Stan was well known for his opinions on a variety of UFO and alien life-related subjects. I will put a link to his official website down below so you all can go and read his papers and his opinions for yourself. Now I personally do not agree with all of Stan's viewpoints. For example, Stan was convinced that Bob Lazar was a complete fraud, and I disagree. However, I do agree with most of Stan's other viewpoints, and I respect his tenacity and dedication on the subject of UFOs and alien life. I very first heard the name of Stan Friedman several years ago when I was researching the infamous Roswell UFO case. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. On July 8, 1947, U.S. military authorities sent out a press release stating that the Air Force was in possession of a flying disc that had crashed on a ranch near Roswell, New Mexico. Yet 24 hours later, the military changed the story. It was only a weather balloon. Some said that was the beginning of a cover-up. Our next guest calls it a cosmic Watergate. Stan Friedman was a civilian researcher who did a complete investigation of the alleged crash of an alien ship in Roswell, New Mexico. And I was impressed by his thoroughness and his objectivity. One of the things that I personally liked about Stan was that he questioned facts until they were proven. In fact, while researching the Majestic 12 case, Stan debunked several allegedly authentic documents as fraudulent. So Stan earned a lot of credibility in my book by being questioning and skeptical. I also find it somewhat ironic that the man who would gain the title the grandfather of ufology would get his start in the field somehow by chance. And that chance happening would spark a 40-year-plus career exploring the topic of UFOs. When an interviewer on Midline asked Stan, he had this to say. Stan, about, I've only got about a minute or so left, so we've looked at this for so many years. Are yes. we any closer to actually unraveling this, making sense of it, and finding out what the real truth is? Well, there's no question that the real truth is that the United States Army Air Force recovered a crashed flying saucer, it recovered alien bodies, and it's covered them up very successfully. So as you can see, Stan didn't mince words. He spoke directly what was on his mind. And I appreciate that kind of honesty. Well, Stan, we sure will miss you, my friend. I just want to play you guys one more clip from Stan Friedman. Strange World Ufology. What I'm hopeful of is that by the time my great-grandson grows up, he will be grateful for what his great-grandfather did, and we will have the answer to this UFO mystery. Thank you very much for the honor you've given me. Well, Stan, I guess if you're the grandfather of ufology, then all of us ufologists are kind of your grandchildren. And we do appreciate what you have done, and we are grateful. And one more thing, Stan. I promise you, we will not stop until we have an answer to this great mystery. Well, guys, for now, that's all I have on the life of the great Stan Friedman. As always, this has been Manny at Area 503. And I wish you all the best until we meet again. And I am out of here to continue my search for universal truth.